Standing in front of here is a, a Dixoni Antarctica or a Tasmanian tree fern. It's a February 15th, 2014. And uh, I planted this specimen in my garden in April 1994. So it's coming up 20 years now. Uh, these are evergreen in our climate here on Salt Spring Island. We're on the, uh, where I am gardening here, it's the high end of Zone 8B. I'm just across the street from the Pacific Ocean, so uh, winters are mild and wet, and summers are warm and dry, so this does need water in the uh, summer months. I have two other ones on the other side of the house in the front garden that don't get a lot of sun. This one actually gets full on hot sun in the summer, and it does get very warm in this alcove here. Uh, for any of those that want to try this, uh, this plant, if you can get a hold of them in your local nursery, I do advise it because they're a very interesting uh, conversation piece. I have this one growing in uh, deep, rich, uh, kind of peaty soil. And um, each year, this is, this is last year's fronds, and you can see they're going to be starting to brown off soon. And then I cut them all off, and uh, it sends out about 24 new ones each spring. So in March, it starts to unfurl giant fiddleheads. And uh, I don't think you can eat them. People ask if you can eat these things. I think it'd be an expensive meal. These plants are about $15, $20 to $20 a trunk inch. And they are slow growing in the trunk. This one here is about six feet a trunk. Uh, winter preparation and protection is actually pretty simple. Um, the coldest temperature I've had here at this location was in December of 2013 for this winter at minus 4.9 degrees Celsius. So that equals 23.1 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we had another cold blast uh, just uh, the beginning of February. Like I say, it's February 15th now, the day after Valentine's Day. And uh, I had minus 4.6 degrees Celsius. So it was actually a little bit colder in December, but not cold enough to bother the Tasmanian tree fern. These fronds here will brown out at about minus 6.5 degrees Celsius or slightly lower, so about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, but that's okay. As long as you've got the uh, center crown protected where the uh, cosiers emerge, right there. That's the most tender part of the fern. I put burlap and I put a little bit of bubble wrap on top of that. Um, this time I even cheated a bit and I put some bubble wrap around the trunk for this, uh, for the cold snap. And I probably didn't need it, but I had it, so I just threw it around there. So anyways, you can see it's looking pretty good. Uh, and in about another month, I will chop off all of these fronds. And uh, the new ones, like I say, will come out and replace these. Because these tend to droop down and kind of get in my way when I get around my house. Uh, understory plants. Uh, in here I have pas Passiflora, there's Passion Vine uh, in the back, and I have lots of Trachycarpus Fortuna, I have Aspidistri Lacia, which is a castor plant, and a Camadoria radicalis. So anyway, I will, um, I will grab the uh, camera and I'll show you the smaller ones at the front of the house, and uh, eventually they will look like these. I planted the ones in the front of the house about three years ago, and like I say, this one here has been 20 years here growing on Salt Spring Island. Uh, British Columbia, Canada. There are other ones in private gardens. I know a guy that has actually a larger one than this one in this garden. It looks actually very nice. And um, there's actually a nursery just uh, down the road from me here, uh, Fraser's Thimble Farms, and they have uh, a lot of tree ferns in stock to choose from. Dixonia fibrosa, Dixonia scrosa. Um, I don't know if they, they might have Cyathea uh, australis and Dixonia antarctica, which th this one is Dixonia antarctica. This is the Tasmanian tree fern, the more common of the hardy tree ferns, and as you can see, it's looking pretty happy here in my Zone 8B garden. It's uh, been a dry winter, but uh, I haven't had to water it because uh, there's not much evaporation at this time of the year because we don't have the heat units, but pretty much every day in the summer I'm giving this guy a drink through the top of the crown. That's the best way to water him because the whole root system basically is the trunk. That does consist of the root system and down in the ground, of course, but the trunk, I believe, is made up of roots. So you water it through the top, and it soaks it up like a sponge. It is a beautiful, very exotic prehistoric plant that will live a long time and grow a very large trunk like a palm tree, but have a crown like a fir. So just think these things are around when the dinosaurs were around. Isn't that cool? Just like the cycads. They're sort of a, a prehistoric plant. And uh, people usually come into my garden, they're looking at all the palms and exotics, and they come here to this alcove and they go, oh my god, what is that? So uh, most people want to try growing this plant in their garden. But those are just a few trip, chip tips of how to get it through a winter here on the southwest coast of British Columbia, Canada. So we'll grab this camera here. We'll give you a little look at that tree fern, Tasmanian tree fern. And uh, then we'll go up here. And we'll show you the smaller ones, what I've done to them. I've just uh, actually mulched the crown in some uh, pine needles and leaves. By the way, folks, there's some myrtle, true myrtle. 
Uh, this garden looks the same 365 days of the year. I like southern hemisphere plants which do well here. Lots of plants from Asia. So here's one here. Littler one. Tasmanian tree fern. And uh, here's another one here. Tasmanian tree fern. Very happy here on Salt Spring Island. British Columbia, Canada. And we're at 48 degrees north latitude. So, And uh, winters here, like I say, are mild and wet. It is the mildest growing area in Canada here on the southwest coast.